good morning. So today we thought uh, what could be a next video or so, we thought let's talk about close guard top. You, also you, people call it close guard, but I actually like to call it close guard uh, from the preference of what bottom guy has to do. But, but uh, why cl close guard? Because uh, I've seen recently, a couple of days, I've seen some close guard videos like a uh, surfacing, so it kind of gave me ideas that that I want to put it out there, what I think about close guard, uh, and maybe why we should change it. It's kind of interesting idea. It's not controversial, uh, but uh, let's say a little bit. So anyway, the idea is that well, uh, I don't think uh, close guard. Uh, I don't think that mm, uh, this close guard top uh, kind of it, it doesn't make sense. In, uh, in my mind, so it's a seal feet, yeah? People talk about this, it's very popular these days. They talk about hip and then they sit and then they test with the legs. Uh, and, but, but more that bothers me is like the arms. Uh, this, for me, doesn't make any sense. I know there's some, you know, people posting here, people doing those things, and it's, those are easily killable. You just push the knuckles, and it's kind of, it's very hard to do it, actually. I know if you're a bigger guy and it's, uh, your toes are just crossing and you can just open it up. But against your own size and everything, it's quite, quite, quite hard. Uh, anyway, so this is one of the, I don't know, uh, one of the uh, points that doesn't make any sense to me. Or I, I think it, it should be better. Because, let's say, uh, I know, I, I learned it years ago and it was called floating hands. And in each jutsu you turn, you know, take the lapels and you have this, or pants, sorry, and then you, then you sit here, yeah? And then it's elbow here, elbow there, blah, 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 yeah? But you can find in YouTube like a gazillion ways how to kill this arm. You have wrist locks, you have stripping this arm and pulling this in and having ended up in a open, over, or like a overhook situations. So it's all about how to kill this arm. So the, what, what un, what's very unlogical here is uh, that I'm fighting his body and in a way he has still two arms left. And you, you see those videos, people are you know, fishing for lapels, fishing over under, having lapels here. So he can pretty much do everything he wants and kind of set up his attack and I just have to be here. It's kind of, it, it, for me, it doesn't make sense. So for me, it makes more sense to control, let's say, to keep the distance away, to stack in, or in some way, try to control the arms, uh, bicep, wrist, or something else. So in, that's the dangerous area. So I'm gonna a little bit uh, mention what I'm trying to prove or trying to add or trying to change and so I would make you think question things that I also see the uh, unlogicalities or something what's the word I think it's the word <laughs> yeah. so uh, first of all I like to be on my toes so when I'm teaching this from the you know, from the zero point so to speak so usually toes are on a mat and now this would be bad because if they pull with the knees I usually fall forward but if I'm actually what we call the samurai stance uh, so, and you can use the same hip in, actually motion, and the arms are very weird position, kind of fits here, and it's important that they're actually reaching. So if they reach, my elbows are close. It's quite hard to pull even with a gi to pull those arm backs. And if I'm more here, then they're very close, and very close to their body, so I'm more reaching. So it's, the arm is going away. So that's also unlogical. And if I'm playing it more here, this is more logical that my arms are here, kind of fits nicely, and it, this actually kind of does something to their posture because they want to keep it a little bit higher and so I can manipulate my body more. And if I kind of push them here and I'm leaning back and I can have that hip, and if they pull, it's quite hard to pull. And then it's you know, it's about how to sit up and stuff, but all those hip bumps and everything, it's also weird because the hips are higher. Uh, I actually teach uh, people to open the legs right away if somebody gets the posture because of threats of leg locks and everything else. Uh, so I usually t teach them to go back grill chicken and you know abandon or sit up. Uh, so or, or come up with me. But let's say here the very strange thing that always bothered me is if they squeeze it's very hard to push the legs open from here. It's quite hard. But if I'm on my toes it's quite it's actually it's not it's easy it's easier it's way easier even if they squeeze a lot and you know, and then you can do those a little bit like, you know, push, push, push those things to open it up and then you're free. Uh, 
So those things can happen, and if they pull me closer, then I'm usually landing, um, wrist fighting, you can have that. This is kind of uh, UK guy, uh, Chris Payne's add-on to this. So you wrist fight, and you can actually slide left and right. You can wrist fight here. You can have the elbows and you know can openers. And what I really like, what, what kind of kills the guard, is a stack. You see it all the time in MMA. A lot of good guys that have Jiu Jitsu good guys, their guard is killed by just wrestlers or you know somebody just knows how to defeat the guard, just stacking in. And let's say just being this, and if they push pull now, just leaning in like a dead weight, and it kind of kills the guard. And usually people are considering like very annoying and you know not good because it's not Jiu Jitsu, but actually you can pass from there. There's a Sao Paulo ways and there's kind of like what Hosh Gracie is emphasizing the stacking. So you can have that way, opening. You can actually open here by standing up and bicep post and just go through there. So the guard passing, guard inside the guard system has to involve everything. One extreme, other extreme and in the middle. So that's very, very important. So usually people consider it's bad Jiu Jitsu when you stack in, but actually you can pass from there. And then it exposes all the things like I can have those controls, I can have a, you know, I can have submissions also, but I can have controls. And it's quite hard to attack those arm bars and stuff. So I have to know what to do here. It becomes like a wrestling match. And what I also like, what I like a lot actually, is that, that kind of thing. So it's creating an angle right away. And if they go under the leg, it's actually not a problem because their, you know, their leg locks are actually easier to do when knee is on the mat. They go under, the knee goes in, and that's, that's easier to attack the legs and you know, lift this up. If the knee is up, then one leg is actually heavy, that it's not pushable. And to the attacking the this leg, it's, it kind of kills the hip. And if they go, kind of easier to, and the knees, it's kind of hard to put the knee under, and they kind of make them, it's easier to put them in a the stack. So, what I'm trying to, like, a, what I'm trying to put under a, a microscope or make a question that this old system doesn't make sense because in MMA you don't see it. So there has to be like a, I'm emphasizing a way and standing up and this just dead weight and just trying to kill the guard and underhooks and stuff. And as a, as a core close guard player, you have to get exposed by people stacking because if you go to fight MMA, it's very surprised that oh, they stack and all your years spending doing Jiu Jitsu against people that try to go away, it doesn't work that way because now they're stacking in. Because this is the stack also kills the rubber guard. Because if somebody has an overhook, if I'm just sagging here, that's why the overhook works. Because this sagging, the silfi creates a pull here. And that's why they, like, you know, they can do all platos and triangles and stuff. But if somebody gets an overhook, try to play a little bit. And I'm just stacking in. This is quite annoying. Even if they get the triangles and stuff, this is still quite annoying. And uh, I can definitely try to defend and not give them triangles. But they have to use close guard differently. They have to open up the legs way earlier because overhook is a pulling grip, so they have to, they have to use the legs to push. But if they just get an overhook, even with the gi and stuff, they can grab the gi. Yeah? If I'm sagging, that's why it works. But if I'm leaning in, and then I can already pass, but there's actually a wrist lock here. You can wrist lock when they're overhooking. So stacking is a very wonderful thing. So I'm trying to come up with a you know, system because it's like there's still things popping up that we have to add and change and some problems. But we know that this is good going away and then it's sitting up even. Hip pumps are quite hard, quite hard. Lifting the legs, creating that angling thing. Uh, even like wrists, uh, elbows, having those things, having the head, and also just stacking and just also, let's say, stacking in in a right way, not like this, but you know, controlling the head and then going here and having the head on a mat and those things, sagging and then try to open. So it has to be all those extremes, and then you have a, let's say, maybe full system of the top guard. And the bottom guy has to know how to do everything against that. They have to have a game 
against the going awayers, stackers, and also somebody that plays in a danger zone. Because let's see, even in a fight of uh, Habib and Conor McGregor, you saw Habib use the bicep post and punched him in the face here. So those, this is very efficient if you have a good pressure here, leaning always forward. Attacking this arm is actually quite difficult. If I'm doing something this, that's more dangerous, but if they go to armbar, all those things, they just, they, they lead to the stack. So, and staying in the danger zone is, a, is dangerous, but that's why you, why you play there, you wanna punch, so that means you have to give something away. So, that was kind of the introduction or something, how my mind works in this section. I might do a soon video about what the bottom guy has to do because we play a lot of uh, close, close guard and we play with a necktie. I don't usually play close guard or even close guard when they're up, I open my legs. So, so I, I definitely have to show you how I teach beginners like in a very, very I don't know, functional, no gi gi close guard. But so, to conclude all this, I think there's, a, there's some issues with a close guard top the way most people play and uh, there's a easier way to, to kill it. So I think we have to have everything, yeah? So full spectrum. And then uh, it kind of makes sense to play it and then it works better in MMA and everything else. So that was kind of my, my rambling about it. And I, I, I hope you, I made you again question things. You saw my point of view. It's still under question, under, under, under construction, sorry. And uh, we try to add pieces and bits and pieces to it and we'll see when it's ready. But uh, I'm using it myself a lot and I'm having quite good success, but certain things are harder to teach because I, I'm, I'm doing it more like feeling based. So I, I have to see what kind of problems people have or come up with a posture answer. So it's, that's why it's under construction all the time. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.